Hello my friends and welcome back to another episode of the state management series. Today we want to talk about the next step in using providers. This is Riverpod. You maybe remember still the episode where I talked about provider, which is a very good idea to just check it out in the info box if you haven't seen it yet, because Riverpod is just an addition to that whole package and uses the provider knowledge and how a provider is working and uses another way to access it. So therefore, check out the video in the video description and now Let's get started with Riverpod. All right, so Riverpod is a package from Remy Roslet who created this. He wanted to get rid of some limitations that provider is uh, delivering and he couldn't get rid around it with without breaking changes to provider itself. So he thought it would be beneficial for the community if he creates an own package for it and called it Riverpod. Besides of the power of the provider package, it also brings some quality improvements for developers and also the user. So it consists out of three um, very important things that Remy implemented in his documentation. Um, the first one is compile safety. You will not get any more the weird error message that a provider could not be found exception, which is very helpful because now the compiler, so our IDE knows already if something does not work or it sounds fishy or it doesn't work as we expected it. The other thing is we are not anymore in a weird space and we have the addition that we can use auto completion, that we get all the benefits of returning parameters and all that stuff. So it is very compile safe and we will get used to that. So let me tell you about the three very much improvements from the provider to Riverpod. Number one, compile safety. Thanks to the direct access to different global variables, where we will talk later to it, which is actually more a function, you will receive errors right away in the IDE. So with that, he could get rid of the problem that sometimes a provider not found exception was thrown and the users didn't know where it comes from. This mostly happened in testing and I think Remy answered a lot and lot of questions regarding to this topic in Stack Overflow. The second part is he wanted to improve the usage of provider, so provider plus I would say. It is now possible to support multiple providers who have the same data type. So for example you have two providers both with a string now they can work perfectly fine with Riverpod. Additionally, you are now able to add and remove dynamically providers. And the third very big improvement is that it is not related or directly dependent anymore on Flutter. With that, we have the benefit that we can reuse it in a Dart, pure Dart package and have there our state management system as we know it from Flutter, for example. Also, it works very well with Flutter hooks and that makes it more awesome. Besides of these three very big improvements, I would like to mention one additional. The documentation of Riverpod has improved significantly. Thanks to an own website, code snippets, prepared examples, it is very easy for everyone to get started with Riverpod and try it out yourself. So really check out this documentation Remy did there a very good job. But now let's get into technical details. For example, why is Riverpod even different to the provider package beforehand? Provider package was managing their providers directly in the widget tree. So that means you had always an own widget called provider, state provider, value provider, um, or proxy provider or whatever you needed. And you had that directly in the widget tree. Now, in the other hand, it is more like you call a provider scope around everything of your whole application and you can register a provider wherever you want to have it. You create a variable which is global, which is a capsule function more or less, but it is necessary to create these different providers out of it. But with that, you have now the power to register it right away everywhere in your application where you want to use it. This gives us a little bit more control about the re-rendering of the UI and gives us some special features. For example, Remy created new modifiers like family and auto-dispose. 
Something that I would like to add to the part where we say that we have now this provider scope surrounding the whole app is that Remy creates at the moment a state viewer inside of the dev tool. You can think about a little bit about like the Redux dev tools, but for Riverpod. And that would be fantastic to have that in the future. He was so generous and sent me already a very early alpha version of that, but he's working on that and I hope you enjoy that. For this tutorial today, we want to work again with the drinks application that we know already from the other state management parts. I created again a lot of to-dos that you will find inside of the IDE. For that you will use the Visual Studio extension or the Android Studio to-dos tab. And you can join us in the journey to create this stuff. For that we have two branches in that Git repository. First is the Riverpod tutorial where you will have all the different to-dos and the second one is the uh, Riverpod solution where you have a solution that works already. So you can see how it works and you can copy it if you have some problems to solve the problem. But now let's jump into code and work together on these to-dos. All right, so welcome to the code base. And here we have our to-do tab open. As you can see, we start again with to-do zero inside of our pubspec.yaml and we will see that we want to add the Flutter Riverpod dependency and the state notifier dependency because we want to use the state notifier here in that case or the state notifier provider. For that, we head over to pub.dev and search for state notifier with an underscore. And the other one is we want to search for river pot. Here we have the Flutter river pot. And if we jump here inside, we find the version by installing. And here is the dependency that we need. We bring it over to our code. The same thing for the state notifier class. You will find both links also down in the video description below. So now we have the two dependencies added and we have the possibility now to make pub get to install the dependencies as we need them. Now when they are added, we can start to go to the next step. So head over to to-do and search for to-do number one. Add the provider scope to the root of the application. Different to provider, the Riverpod package has a dependency to all widgets and therefore we have provider scope around every widget. This allows now that we can globally implement our river pods and use them from everywhere without to fear that we don't have a dependency added. So in our drink state notifier, we want to create a class, a drink state notifier that extends the state notifier class. With that, we have now the possibility to overwrite the constructor. And as you see, we pass in a state and this is getting set in the parent, uh, in the super class. So inside of the state notifier. If the state is null that we receive, we pass in an empty List. Now, in order to get all the selected drinks, uh, to select a drink here in that state notifier, we want to call void select drink. We pass down a drink and we call selected. Now, in selected, there is the Boolean if the state is selected or not. Now, because the state has to be immutable, we create a new state where we iterate above the old state and get all the drinks out of the old state. And for each drink, we make the equals part. If the drink has the same name, we create a new drink with the name selected. And if it is not the same name, we just pass the old drink back. So we created our drink state notifier class, extends state notifier class. We created a super notification, which improved that, that part. So we have now an empty state inside in the worst case. And we added the add method to select a drink. Fantastic. Now we can select a drink here. Up here at the state notifier, we also have to define the generic type of the state notifier. And this is a list of drink. Let's jump over to our checkbox riverpod screen .dark. Inside here, we want to create a final variable that contains now our new state notifier provider. We call it drinks provider. Here we create a new state notifier provider. The state notifier provider expects from us a function which gets a reference and here we want to pass down the new state notifier that we created. So the drink state notifier. In order to make it possible, we have now to pass down the initial state. And the initial state we take from the set state example, where we have already the default state for our list of drinks. As you can see, we have names of four drinks with 
false. So this is the selected part. I will clean that up with some commas and we are ready to go. With that, we created the final variable with the state notifier provider and we initialize the drinks state notifier with a list of drinks. Now, in order to get only the selected drinks, what I want to do is show you an example how we get selected drinks. For that, I create a new select provider. And what we will do is we create a new provider here, which also receives the reference. And now here, what we want to do is actually a bit more than usual. We want to return something. And we want to get now with the ref.read, we access the drinks provider and the drinks provider.state. So we receive here the elements that we want to access. And inside of here, the selected provider ref read knows now that this one is a list of drinks. So what we can do here is asking now where get the element and search for elements selected. And last but not least, we calculate it to a list and return the whole thing. The provider needs to get a type because it can't be inferred. So I know that this will return a list of drink. Fantastic. Now the Riverpod package delivers us one cool feature, the consumer widget. Inside of the consumer widget, if we change a state less widget to a consumer widget, we receive down here an error in the build function. What we can do now here is we can say we get a scope reader and we call that watch. And with this watch variable here, with that scoped reader, we have the possibility to access our providers. So if I call now watch and ask for the drinks provider.state, I receive now the state of the current drinks. And additionally, whenever this state changes, the build function will get re-triggered and renders our tree again. So here we get all drinks, which is a list of drink. The other list of drink that we get is the selected drinks. And also here we call watch, ask for the selected provider. We receive here immediately our information that we want. Please be aware inside of this watch here, if you do it like this, you will still ask for the provider, but as you see, you get a little warning, which says that the state can only be used within instance member members of the state notifier. This is because the state should be protected and it can't be re-triggered build if we don't do it this way. Fantastic. Now we have it here in place and we can access all drinks down here where we need it to show the different drinks widgets. For that, we create a for loop with a final variable D in our drinks list that we created. So up here, we get all the drinks. And what we can do now is we just replace the text here with the D.name and false with D.selected. In order to call now select drink, we want to access the context. If we take a look, the context is our current build context of the build function here. And now with context dot, we have the possibility to access the read method. And here inside, we can ask for the drinks provider. Now we can access select a drink, bring inside the drink itself, which is in our case D, and selected is the value that we get from the unchanged callback. Fantastic. Now also this is working. If we take now a look into our application, we can see already that I can select the different drinks. But what is about the order is? Also this part needs to be implemented, right? So first of all, let's read what we have to do. To do 12, read drinks provider and get the selected drinks. And 13, use the read drinks provider to receive the selected drinks. You maybe remember, now we have here an item builder inside which gets us a whole new context. So in order to receive the same information, one option that we have, thanks to the Riverpod package, is that we can wrap the whole thing in a so-called consumer widget. The consumer widget, as the from a provider, wants to have a builder where we get a context, a watch variable and a child, and returns something. In our case, the text. The cool thing is now, with this watch variable, we can specify the uh, provider that we want to read from. The selected provider returns us a list of drinks, right, that are selected. And with that, we can now access the index of it and call name. With that, we pass that string inside of the text. We can remove this. And now to our last to do 13. Here we are again outside of this list view builder. So with that, we have the access directly to our selected drinks element where we can call the length of it. If we are now that far, we should see now that when we select an item, oh, down here we have an error. It doesn't read it. Hmm. 
Where comes this from? Well, if the selected provider currently reads the state, but actually we want to watch it. So that means we want to react on changes here. We can see the order is and the text is coming where it is necessary. With that, we have finally solved all the problems that we had and the application is running again as we wanted. And this is fantastic. All right, so that's it. We implemented our Riverpod example right away in the application and it works, it reacts to our state and we made our app reactive. Fantastic. Now it is your turn. What is your experience with Riverpod? Did you use it already in your applications? Do you see any downsides? Please let me know down in the comments below. For this tutorial today, I want to make a special thanks to Remy Roslet. He really helped me out here. He was made with me a 30 minutes call where I could ask him all the questions that I had regarding to Riverpod. Also, please check out his Twitter account because he want to create an article in the next couple of weeks around the Riverpod part to just keep up to date with the Riverpod package. And as always, if you feel very generous today, please give that video a like. And if you are new to this channel, please hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching me and enjoy the rest of your day. See ya, guys.